Hey guys, and welcome back to another Conan Exiles video. Today we are in the Highlands, just south of New Asgarth in the Devil's Squat, building an outpost. This build was suggested by Tina Drake on my Building Tips 2 video, so thanks for the suggestion, Tina. This build is designed to be a small clan base, suited to about 3 or 4 residents. This outpost is built to have some of the necessary resources available to any smaller clan, including a house to sleep and eat in, a workshop area for crafting, a secure warehouse for storage, and a fairly safe perimeter, to stop players or any of the local wolf packs easily getting in. This base is a fairly intermediate setup, and is designed more as a nice roleplay base rather than something that will actually be viable for a PvP environment. I chose to use wood and stone in this build, as the building palette really suits the highlands well, due to the abundance of natural resources and earthly colours in this area of the map. So without further ado, let's get started. Firstly, I'll start off with the perimeter fence. I'm using the vanilla wooden fence pieces to draw a rough border around the outpost, connecting them to two circular foundations on the western facing side of the outpost. These foundations will serve as two watchtowers of sorts, rising above the outpost and creating a suitable entrance for the area. When the perimeter fence was complete, I then built up each watchtower. I decided to use external stairs to keep the body of the watchtower thin, then using ceilings to extend out by another tile above the watchtower. I then placed fences around the stairs and ceilings of each tower, then building a small section of walls one tiles high atop each tower for a small area of storage for arrows, bows and that sort of thing in case of attack. Finally, I placed tiled roof wedges atop the watchtower to finish it off. Next for the lodge, which is where the residents of this base will sleep, eat and relax. This structure will be built with two main rooms on the ground floor, with a corridor connecting them from the front door, which also leads to stairs that will connect to the bedrooms on the first floor. I also extended a balcony out on the first floor over the entranceway, along with later choosing to extend the back of the bedroom behind the build out by another tile. Each floor would be two tiles high, finishing off the build with a peaked apex roof made with tiled roof pieces again. I also placed fences on the balcony. Next for the workshop. 
I built the base plate of the workshop with a circular form, extending out the back half of the build by another tier to allow for a little bit more room. I placed walls around the back of the build, leaving the front open and placing fences around the edges. I built the walls one tile high, then placing tiled rooftop pieces atop the build. I used a pillar to support ceilings atop those roof pieces, which would later allow me to place inverted wedges to fill the gaps in the roof. I then placed corner rooftop pieces atop the ceiling, filling the gaps on the front end with wall caps and then finally placing a rooftop end cap in the centre ceiling and two more corner pieces on each side of the end cap. This can look a tad weird and I don't think there's any real best way to fill this area with rooftop pieces, but I think considering the whole structure of the workshop it actually works quite well. Next for the warehouse, I removed some of the fences on the northern side of the build to make room for the foundations, which I then built out in a rectangular shape. I built the walls of the ground floor two tiles high, then capping off the build with a peaked apex roof. I would later add ceilings atop the two tile high walls to create another storage space above the ground floor of the warehouse, just underneath the roof. Finally, when the shell of the build was done, it was then time to of course furnish. Approaching from the west, the build is lit with standing and bracketed torches, and is decorated quite liberally with planters, which suits the area nicely. The watchtowers serve as a great entranceway for the build, allowing guards to sit atop them, with small storage spaces able to hold various combat equipment, should any ne'er-do-wells come searching for quarrels at the front door. Heading over to the workshop, this area is perfect for crafting, maintaining and repairing many of the items, weapons and buildings around the outpost. The open air design helps to keep the workshop well ventilated and also feels quite unique compared to some of the other buildings in this area. Heading over to the warehouse, this is where the vast majority of items are stored securely, with plenty of room for storing all sorts of items. This warehouse should be sufficient for any small clan, there is plenty, plenty of storage room here, and to top it off it looks quite good with the carpets and the lighting. Finally, the lodge. Heading through the front door and to the right, we'll end up in the kitchen. 
This is a small yet functional room that serves as a great room for cooking and serving food. Across the hall is the lounge and dining room, which serves as a great place to relax and eat food, however, it is a little bit cramped. You could remove the small coffee table in front of the fireplace if you wanted more room, but, you know, I like my coffee tables. Heading up the stairs, we end up in the bedroom. This is a spacious room with some storage for clothes and such, along with beds for the residents. This room also has access to the balcony which provides a great view across the sprawling highlands. And there we have it, an outpost in the highlands, just south of New Asgarth, in the Devil's Squat. Thanks for watching, and again thanks to Tina for the suggestion. If you've enjoyed this video, leave a like, and if you have any suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave them in the comments below. As usual, any suggestions are welcome. Don't forget to follow me on Twitch and join the fun on our Discord through the links in the description. And if you would like to support the future of this channel, the link to my Patreon is also in the description below, with various tiers and rewards including special Discord roles, sneak peeks at new videos, your name at the end of videos, and more. On that note, a thanks to our patrons Sammy, Doomshade, and Dawnfox. If you're new here, feel free to check out the rest of the content on this channel. There are plenty more Code Exiles videos coming every Wednesday and Sunday, so if you like what you see, subscribe and turn on post notifications to be the first to see the next video, and to join us on the road to 10,000 subscribers. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.